All right, everyone, let's talk about notch filtering today. So this is going to be a pretty quick video, maybe kind of a shorty, but I wanted to really quickly talk about the idea of notch filtering when you're using an EQ. So notch filtering is something that we do when we're using an EQ. And it's basically when we take a band, so it's a range of frequencies, and we make it attenuate the signal, so reduce the levels of the signal, and we give it a very, very high Q value to make it a very, very skinny bandwidth. So high Q value, skinny bandwidth. And Q, we use Q, it comes from the electronics world. My understanding is at least that it comes from the electronics world and it stands for quality. With audio, a high Q value does not necessarily mean better quality, but with electronics, um, it means you can be more precise. So that's where it got the, the quality indicator. I don't know. Anyway, that's besides the point. So that's what notch filtering is. So whereas right here, we have this in play on this track here. So this is actually a high pass filter. This is not notch filtering. The notch filtering that's happening in this plugin is right here. Um, and different plugins actually have notch filtering settings that can do this even more precisely than this plugin. This plugin is the stock EQ that comes with Pro Tools. It's the EQ7 band. So if you go multi-channel plugin, you go to Avid or you go to EQ, you can find it under EQ3 7 band. And notch filtering is really handy for when something's ringing out in a really annoying way and in a really specific way. It's great for whistle tones with singers as well. So a lot of times we have um, whistle tones with singers or we have guitars will ring out in a really weird way and I'll do some notch filtering on guitars a lot of the time. Um, stuff like that. So what I'm going to show you is actually an example from a project that I have my students do. At, uh, I teach at a college, so I teach an audio for film class. This is their first project where they're kind of learning how to use the different um, tools within Pro Tools. So this is just a human spoken word, human voice thing. You can kind of get the idea for how this tends to happen with singing, though, too, since it is human voice. Um, and I'll kind of show you what we did here. So this is the phrase. I'm going to just bypass this. It sure is nice to work in a studio with no grounding issues. Those 60 cycle hums are a bummer. It's so you get the idea for this project. What we did is we had, um, it's human voice. There are a series of phrases. Each phrase has a different, really specific problem. And then we target that problem using a specific tool within Pro Tools. So in this one, we're using the EQ. So I'm gonna um, activate this plugin again. So you'll, you'll notice when we listened, right? There was that low hum. And that's kind of the main point of this project is for them to learn about high pass filtering. So HPF right here. Um, how it allows the high frequencies to pass through and it cuts off the low frequencies. So the first thing they do in this project is cut that out. So I'll just play that for you guys. It sure is nice to work in a studio with no grounding issues. Those 60 cycle hums are a bummer. It so I kind of show them how, you know, um, it's kind of a game of not cutting into the voice too much. If we brought this way up, it would cut into the voice. It sure with no and not setting it so low that you still have the hum. It sure is nice to work in a studio with no ground. And kind of finding that happy medium because it's always a give and take with this kind of thing. And a lot of times it's not so clear cut, but that's kind of the main thing for this project. But then there's also a hum in this project. So I'm going to bypass this band here so you can kind of listen for this really, really high frequency ringing. It sure is nice to work in a studio with no grounding issues. So if you have a good enough monitoring system, if you have good enough hearing, you'll hear that really high uh, ringing. It's right about 12 kilohertz. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how I tend to find these things. So what I'll do is I'll activate the band and I'll bring it all like way up, up a good amount. Um, you don't wanna do this just to find things that aren't really ringing out anyway, because a lot of times as you sweep, you'll hear things kind of ring out as you travel around. You wanna make sure that this is actually a ringing that's happening when there's no um, increase in the decibel level for the band. So just keep that in mind. But basically I bring it way up and then I sweep, I make the Q value very high, so it's skinny, right? I don't want it wide, I wanna hear the specifics. And then I sweep for the frequency to hear, listen for the suck, so to speak. Um, so I'll just do that really quickly and you'll hear how when I get to around 12K, it really rings out. It sure is nice to work in a studio with no grounding issues. Those 60 cycle hums are a bummer. It sure is nice to work in a studio with no grounding issues. Those 60. So you hear how as, as I go above 12K, it starts to get quieter and then it gets kind of like in your head right at about 12K. It sure is nice to work in a studio with no grounding issues. 
Those 60 cycle hums are a bummer. It sure is nice to work in a studio with no grounding issues. And then it starts to go away as I go lower. And, you know, there, there are probably other, a lot of times with the human voice, there are other frequencies around here that you might also want to notch. So, you know, you might also hear things that annoy you um, elsewhere in the frequency spectrum on this voice specifically. Um, but what I do is then I get them, you know, you, you find the frequency that you want to target. So I already know it's 12, so I'm just going to go 12. And then once you find it, all you have to do is reduce the gain on it to remove it. So I'm going to do that. It sure is nice to work in a studio with no grounding issues. Those 60 cycle hums are a bummer. It's so much better, right? So I'm going to bypass it, uh, the, just this band in and out so you can hear the difference. It sure is nice to work in a studio with no grounding issues. Those 60 cycle hums are a bummer. It sure is nice to work in a studio with no grounding so that's the basic idea behind notch filtering, right? We're kind of notching out a really specific section of the frequency spectrum to get something that's annoying. So a lot of times it's whistle tones. Um, I can also show you really quickly on my favorite EQ. This is what I tend to use all the time for an EQ is the Fab Filter EQ. I'm not cool enough to have the Pro Q3 yet, but maybe I will soon. I like to switch it to seven band and then I like to switch it to natural phase and then I'll you know, go for it. All right, so I bypassed this previous one so we can actually hear the difference. And I added the high pass filter here. So let me just play it for you guys. It sure is nice to work in a studio with no grounding issues. Those six. So you hear that hum. So I'm just going to click to add a band. I can make the Q really, really skinny, really, really specific. This one goes up to a 40 here for the Q. And then what I can do is I can scan again, or I can just find that 12 kilohertz because I know that's the spot, right? And then I can bring it down. It sure is nice to work in a studio with no grounding issues. And there you go. So, right? So you can do the same thing with your EQ, whatever that is. But your EQ, if whether you have this one or another one, might have this option as well, where you can click where it says bell here, and there's actually a notch filter option. So if you look at the shape of this, when I click on it, you'll see this dot move to up here, and then it sets the gain and the Q value for you. So let me just click on that. And you'll notice here now my gain option is inactive. So I'm basically just choosing the um, the frequency for it. And I could adjust the cue, but you know, if you're notch filtering, you probably want it to be pretty skinny. And so now it's really specifically notch filtering for me. So let's listen with and without. It sure is nice to work in a studio with no grounding issues. Those 60 cycle hums are a bummer. It sure is nice to work in a studio with no grounding issues. So that's that. That's the idea of notch filtering. It's just something that we do with EQs to remove really specific ranges of frequencies, to remove things like whistle tones, ringing out, stuff like that. And I don't know if I have anything else to say about it. So I think, let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all of that stuff. And other than that, uh, I have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash noise. Please feel free to check that out. We've been hanging out on a Discord server. That's kind of what I've been focusing on lately. It's been a lot of fun. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thanks so much for hanging out. Okay. My water tastes like shit today. It's gross. I have a water softener outside my house, which is like a whole new thing for me. Um, and I think the lid got a little loose because I had to put it back in place today. And I think it might be kind of gross and I need to clean it. And it's pretty gross that I'm drinking this water right now, to be honest. It's pretty disgusting. I don't know. It's snowboarding season. I've been snowboarding a little bit. I've gone a couple days so far. Planning on going again, hopefully a weekend soon. So I'm really excited about that. That'll be fun. I just drive up in the van and then go snowboarding. So, okay. I have to hang my acoustic treatment for my ceiling still, but I got all the corner base traps in place, so that's cool. Um, I don't know. I don't know what else is happening. All right. Later, Gators.